Hi everyone, I am Dr. Pravin Kaur Gupta and in this video we will talk about a new variant of COVID-19, Omicron. This video is completely based on facts and the facts is taken from the World Health Organization CDC. This video is about giving you information because unless we don't have the right information, as a medical student, as a medical practitioner, we will not be able to take an informed decision. The chaos created by a lot of misinformation spreading around it should be cleared and let's talk about this in a scientific way to understand and also evolve our knowledge. Before you do that, please subscribe to my video because we'll talk about a lot of these things in the coming videos as well. Let's start it. But Omicron, everything we should know. What? Number one. Ever since the first case of the Omicron came into the effect on 24th of November 2021, it has been really spreading out. More than the virus, what has spread across is the news of the virus, isn't it? And we are worried what will happen. So we give you some timelines we should all know. On 24th of November 2021, the first case was reported in South Africa in the Guateng province. From that came the next report of 26th November, 27th November, 28th November, and we all have been looking into this 29th November, 30th November, and on the 1st of December came a case in India also. From that case from India, today we are into the 21 case of the Omicron all over India. Well, is it only enough? We have to understand why are the cases in India 21? Well, is it low or high? And what is the chances of this increasing? Or are we at all going to third wave? If yes, let's understand that. First of all, you should understand what is the impact of the Omicron on the countermeasures. We all know we have to follow the social distancing. We have to look at the diagnostic processes, therapeutics and vaccines. To understand this, we should first understand the basic structure of Omicron. Well, any virus, we have talked about this in the previous video also, the viruses have spike protein. The spike protein attaches to the ACE2 receptors on the lungs and from which it enters inside. When it enters inside in the alveoli, it keeps on multiplying. The first multiplication, how it happens in the upper respiratory tract. But this virus has a lot of difference, especially in the spike protein. To understand that, let's first understand what does Omicron actually stands for. Omicron is made from the word Omega. You might have quite be thinking, like see, the virus has been named by World Health Organization as Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. We cannot forget Delta, which actually was the major cause of second wave in India in the last six months. Well, this virus was to be named as something in the same quantity ahead, but it was named not the Z and not Phi, it was named Omicron. The reason is, look at the name. Omicron, it has come from the word Omega, which means Omega, large number. And Micron comes from the word Micros, which means very small. Yes, scientists have named this very simply as Greek alphabet so that even the non-scientific people can also name this like Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta and now it come is a Omicron. Well, World Health Organization has named this Omicron as a pango lineage of B1.1529. In this, it is a key amino acid substitution. Now, this is very, very important. The main substitution in this is actually the spike protein. The spike protein is the main antigen through which the virus not only enters inside, but we as diagnostic people also use the spike protein or S gene for diagnosing in the real time PCR of this test. So what has happened in this protein is there is a change in the spike protein and especially these bold letters you see here like the G339, G317L, S. 373p these all are the major changes in this virus this amounts to amount of 15 changes in the spike protein compared to the omicron when you compare this to the actual covid 19 the first discovered that what has happened because of this change in spike protein well and i have made this very simple to yourself so what has happened is the n501y that increases the increased affinity of this virus to bind to the ace receptor this virus is now infecting more of the more of the people. And more importantly, these three changes, the H655Y, the N67K and the P681H, these three are the changes in the spike protein and that is causing increased spike cleavage because of which there's more and more transmission of this virus. In fact, scientists have now seen, well, Cases are not very high, so we cannot confirmly say, but scientists have proven that the infectivity of this virus is 500 times, yes, you had it correctly, 500 times more than the actual virus, which was the Delta virus previously. So we can understand what the disease severity. Does the increase transmission of the virus necessarily mean it is more severe? Well, for that, we should know more facts. This B151529 has over a 50 mutation including 30 of them on the spike protein. The spike protein is a major target of most of the vaccines which we have used throughout the India. 
For example, we have COVID shield and the Covaxin. They both are actually based on spike protein. And the reason you can also understand because when we look at the vaccine efficacy, what you measure is the S protein antibody, which you can measure as a neutralizing antibody in various titers. So what has happened is because this various change in this S protein, this vaccines may or may not be effective. How much will be effective has to be understood and to understand that the NIV Pune, yes, the National Institute of Virus Pune has taken the virus strain from the person who was infected in Maharashtra and is now trying to isolate it, neutralize it to see that. But that takes at least seven days for the report to come because first the virus has to be isolated. Virus isolation takes time on the cell culture media. It has to be then moved into the neutralizing media and then see what is the efficacy of the vaccines. So the new emerged vaccines may not respond to the monoclonal antibodies because most of these antibody also, this monoclonal antibody we have used for this virus actually cannot act because most of them also act on the uh, S protein only, especially because of these four which you always understood. Now what is the impact on these, on the vaccines? As I explained to you, because it has a lot of changes in the spike protein, this virus may escape the vaccine induced immunity. Okay. Well, well, are we so sure? Well, we aren't. Why we aren't? Because most of the news coming from the South Africa is completely based on the WhatsApp and not on actual papers. So unless you don't get the actual papers, we cannot trust what is the news being spread out from there. But yes, the case of South Africa has definitely seen a spike in trend and that trend may not be actually implied how much severe the form of this virus is. Because the recent report says that P21 people in India who are infected with this Omicron have not shown the severe symptoms as of now. So that's a good news because that will help us to maybe treat these cases very further on, on ahead also. Well, I've repeated here all the changes in the S protein. Well, this is an uh, image we have taken from the um, actually uh, the WHO. So what should be done? Well, the India, Indian country has been preparing a lot because initially the vaccine, uh, sorry, initially any person who was arriving from in, in India from the at, at, from at risk countries were all go, un, un, un asked to undergo the RT-PCR in the airport. What has now changed is any person who is coming from at risk or non at risk countries have to undergo the RT PCR and then only they are allowed to enter India. If they are point positive, they are put in quarantine. If not, they are then asked to leave with the airport. So this is a very good step that India has taken. But actually, seeing the boundaries, boundaries, or actually if those people who are flying out of the at risk areas, is it correct? But and this understand, suppose the virus gets infected or as is discovered in India. And this virus is discovered in India and we have called this Indian variant of the COVID. Well, every country now stops flying the people who are flying abroad from India. Well, is it correct? Because that has been discovered in India it doesn't necessarily mean it's an Indian variant. So first of all, we should not call this South African variant or Chinese variant or Indian variant. Let's call this Omicron only because that is how it should be named. Secondly, completely stopping the flight services is not the right option. Because anyhow, people have to move ahead because the family are stuck. That's my completely view. That my own view. You may all completely differ from it. So let's take. Let's see how the virus goes ahead. Well, a SARS-CoV-2, any SARS-CoV-2 has been uh, defined by the WHO in two variants. One is the variant of the interest, and was various variant of concern. Variant of interest is something which causes more and more transmissibility. Various, various of the concern, that is the Omicron has been listed as various of concern because it shows more transmissibility. It also shows changes because it has shown around, I told you, around 30 proteins have been changed from the original spike protein. It has more virulence compared to the original one. Well, we are not sure about this point, but surely is having more and more transmissibility compared to the normal or you can say usual COVID-19 infection initially discovered. It also has effectiveness, but it can escape the vaccination and can also escape the monoclonal antibodies used against this variant. And therefore, the SARS-CoV-2 has been said as, sorry, the SARS-CoV-2 Omicron variant has said to be not only a variant of interest, but has to be said as variant of concern, VOC. That is what is very, very important here. This tells us a lot of things about the Omicron. Summing up, Omicron is a variant which has a lot of changes in the protein and therefore it has more nature of binding to the ACE2 receptors. Because the more binding to ACE2 receptors, it will infect more. Because of some changes in the S protein, it also has more transmissibility. So surely it will spread more. Uh, infection more and spread more may not necessarily mean it's more and more severe. So are we way there into the third wave has to be understood in the days to come. Even the common cold virus, kills more people compared to the 
COVID-19. But COVID-19 has really created a lot of havoc. But yes, we must be ensuring ourselves to have protection from that. So what does that mean? It means social distancing and definitely the use of three ply or the surgical mask, if better possible, N95 mask should be used for in preventing us from this infection. A good amount of knowledge should be very important before we just start spreading those WhatsApp uh, 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 data that the virus is very severe and will cause enormous number of death in the days to come that's not actually true and has to be proven in days to come well that has to be proven more by the facts scientific facts and any facts that we actually get i will surely share it with you right now this is all i can tell about uh, omicron but be safe be ensure that you and your family keep themselves protected and you ensure that you get a good and a healthy life treat your patient wells because you are the person whom all these patients are patients will actually depend upon well, one more thing is the COVID-19 can have a negative RT-PCR, especially if you're looking at the S gene only. So ensure that you look into those lab reports, which do not only look for the S protein only and look for the RDRT gene and the E gene as well. That is further information that we should all know about. Taking care and wishing you all the best. Ensure that you do your own judgment before you treat a patient. Thank you. Goodbye. If you like this video, please like and comment in below this section because it really motivates us to bring more and more facts like this. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.